Ah, oh, hell. I'm in the wrong game again. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, and it's Man Sword of the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you into the Let's Play episode of Echo Flynn's Path. So, y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Alright. The way the phone is propped up, it almost looks like it's on a display. It's a weird way to place it. Actually, one second, y'all, let me, uh, there we go. Much better. Okay. I know I should snoop through his phone, but if he wants to act all mysterious and dismissive, he's leaving me not much choice. Also, someone shaved my goatee off. That warrants enough of an emergency, I guess. I tap the screen and my message appears. I'm asking him where he is and telling him that everyone left. Tabbing back, I see one other message. The rest seem to have been deleted. It's from someone named Ryan. He has given no profile picture. The bar is at 33 South Allo Way, off of Hankley and Route 93. Hankley and 93? I think that's by the casino near the edge of the reservation. I spent most of the day looking at a map of the county. So I think I have a good spatial sense of where it is now. The question is, why did Flynn leave this here with just this message on it? It's like he wanted me to find it. He wanted me to follow him. Jesus, does he think that I'm that much of a snoop? Because apparently I am. This time it's my phone that buzzes. Another message from Leo. Hey. Huh? I type a quick response. I have to go. Sorry, Leo. I shove my phone back into my pocket and head outside. It's actually nippy out in comparison to the heat of the day. Sheet clouding, uh, sheet clouding cover, sheet clouding covers about half the sky above. There's a tinge of humidity in the air, which is surprising. We usually, usually we get, we usually get less. We usually, we usually we get. Wow. Okay, that's an odd. Usually we get less than an inch of rain this time of year. Another text. Leo again. Are you serious? I sigh, putting my phone back and getting my keys out. I'll think of something and apologize later. I don't feel nearly as sluggish as I did before, thankfully. Once inside my car, I put the keys in the ignition. Enough to keep the enough to keep the inside lights on while I fiddle with the GPS. 33 South Allo Way. Got it. Looks like it'll be about a 22-minute drive, according to this thing. Dude! Where are you going? I look over. Carl and Daxon are staring at me through the passenger window, concerned expressions on their faces. Well, a concerned expression on Daxon's face. Carl just looks drunk. What? Where have you guys been? With you? With <clears throat> with you? Why the hell did you guys shave off my goatee? Dude, are you like allergic to Havarti or something? Uh, it was actually Gorgonzola. That Havarti Flynn wanted was sketchy. Carl smiles lopsidedly at Daxon. Dastardly. What are you... I reach up to grab my chin, feeling the familiar scruff of dark brown hair upon my paw pads. I feel my heart start to thump heavy in my chest. What the hell? Daxon opens the passenger door. Hmm. Oh, yeah. That's weird. You sure should be driving? You're kind of wigging out, no offense. I angle the rearview mirror down toward me. Sure enough, there it is on my chin. I'm sorry, I, I could have sworn that it was missing earlier. Well, you were sleeping. It could have just been a nightmare. I read about all that stuff online. It's your subconscious playing out your deepest desires, man. Carl slurs some, looking a mix of dazed and chipper. I don't think so, Carl. But look, are you guys coming with me? I think Flynn wanted us to follow him. Yeah, we saw his message. They did? I don't know, he's kind of a private guy. If we're wrong, he's gonna be pissed. Puh, we could have think, we could think of it like, a, uh, like an away mission. Even in the dark, I can practically feel Daxton cringe. <laughs> oh god, Carl. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'll go with you, but I'll hang back in the car. I'm still a bit reeling from the whole facial hair fiasco, but the banter is making me feel better. Well, uh, you could be tactical support? <clears throat> this is why I don't usually share my interests with other people. Carl clambers into the back seat first, nearly toppling over. Daxton climbs up front, a little tipsy. He seems to have most of his motor functions intact. Lucky I don't have classes on Fridays. Alright, y'all, one second. It is coffee time. Not coffee time, it is water time. I'll get some more water soon. Mm -hmm. Out of water. Okay. Squint, trying to peer beyond what is illuminated by my headlights. Driving feels difficult right now. My nerves are kind of fried, tingling beneath my fur. I end up overcorrecting on every slight turn. 
doesn't help that the shitty state highway is so meandering and completely devoid of light. Out here, even the main stretches of ro stretches of road sidewind around the hills and mountains. I guess I'm used to Pueblo where they just flatten or tunnel through everything. My issues right now also might be stemming from the fact that I'm still a little inebriated. Fuck. I used to be so damn hard on Leo whenever he drank and drove, drank and drive, drank and drove, and now here I am. Maybe I should have brought my meds. Veer right in one mile. Chase! Hmm? I loosened my grip on the wheel some, peering in the rearview mirror and catching the glint of Carl's green eyes looking back at me. This feels familiar, don't it? I frow my brow. I'm not sure what he means. We were both just starting high school. Huh? I don't know what you're talking about. Carl doesn't respond and a silence follows. He stares out his window with his gaze lulled, his phone sitting idle in his lap. Daxon is looking curiously at us now, though when neither of us speaks up, he goes back to picking at the planet, picking at the planet print on his shirt. <clears throat> I feel kind of like I'm sneaking out to go to a party or something. <laughs> he looks over at me with a slight smile. Well, um, we might be? Well, we're gonna arrive at this address and find fun in a... <laughs> A gimp suit surrounded by a warehouse full of rubber ducks. Carl lets out a quiet rumble of a snicker. Yeah, man, this is all real familiar. We passed the flat concrete pad where an old gas station once stood. Again, I think Carl is about to speak, but he says nothing. I don't get out much, you know. Around here, there's not much to get out to. The salamander rolls his shoulders, then shakes his head. I could always drive to Peyton. I've got my scooter. It just doesn't feel worth it, you know. I mean, not just gas or monetary reasons. It just doesn't... It just isn't comfortable to be away from home. I've got basically everything I need. And I got that Prime Delivery account that drops off groceries on my doorstep. It's weird how easy it is to feel like that's normal. I surround myself with TV, books, and video games, and the fact that I'm alone in the middle of the desert doesn't even affect me. You got Flynn for company, don't you? We keep to our separate sides of the houses, usually, but sometimes almost a week goes by without me actually seeing him. There's always the internet, dude. You got online friends and all that stuff for gaming, right? Daxon adjusts his seat, giving himself some more legroom. I, I, I post on a I post on a fan forum pretty regularly. I'm a moderator. Let me guess. For a... For a... For a... Ed Astro, yep. Give me your phone. Give me your phone. Daxton blinks. What? Carl makes a grabby motion with his paw towards Daxton. Just give it to me for uh, one second. Daxton clutches his cell to his chest, looking uneasily toward the drunken ram. Don't worry, I'm not gonna go through your messages or nudie pics. Who do you think I am, Chase? That one stings a bit. Ass. Daxton slowly relents, keeping close eye on Carl as he gives him his phone. He taps at it in silence for about 15 seconds before passing it back. There, you got me in your contacts. I also put my username for games and stuff if you ever want to play together on PC. Oh, uh, thanks. The salamander quickly checks the screen before click looking back to Carl. I'll send you a message whenever I get back home if you ever want a game, or if I need to hook up with some ice cream. Carl makes a flubbering noise with his mouth. Ice cream boy at your surface, dude man. Ew, surface. <laughs> Daxton titters some, shaking his head. I was just kidding with that last part. I would never do that. I mean, you must be sick of hearing that all the time. Carl shakes his head, even after he begins speaking. Nah, I don't like tell people that shit every often because it's because it's awk, you know? It's awk, Jesus. Though I totally will hook you up. I used to do that for Flynn and Leo, but then Flynn went on his whole health food bullshit. And Leo? I don't know, he stopped asking. Veer right. Alright, one second, y'all. Right? My arms stiffen and I swerve onto the off ramp with more gusto than I meant to. I feel the other's eyes on me and I try to act casual. It's like this is it up ahead. Kind of out in the middle of nowhere, isn't it? This isn't the reservation yet, right? I look toward the horizon. I can just make out the familiar glint of the Blue Diamond Casino past one of the rolling hills. Everything out here is in the middle of nowhere, but no, the reservation is on the other side of the casino. Do you guys ever go there? Um, no, I'm not much for gambling. I bet gun skins on ranked matches online sometimes. That place is mainly for really old people, packed in their RVs. Flynn and I were talking about it the other day. Like, they paint the ceilings all, all blue sky colored and don't display any clocks and simulate sunlight inside. Trick the seniors into staying longer. That's messed. Capitalism at its finest, dude man. Is that my nickname now? What? Dude man? It sounds like Daxton. Most people default to Dax. Your destination is ahead in 400 yards. 
Carl seems like he like he's about to say something, but quiets as we all see our destination. Oh, jeez! I turn off the road and loosely pat gravel seeming to scatter under my tires. We're here. It's a long red building. The exterior is mostly dilapidated. The wood siding falls apart in places. I can see only two windows, both of which have colored construction paper blocking the view inside. There's no signage indicating what the hell the name of this place even is. Well, at least none right now. It looks like there is some broken neon lettering along the roof's edge, but I can't make out anything legible from it. There are about half a dozen cars parked behind the building. Flynn's truck is the only one out front. He's here for sure! The salamander reaches into his pocket, and to my surprise, pulls out Flynn's phone. When did you grab that? Daxon cocks his head at me, holding up his phone. Right after we looked at it? I rubbed my forehead. Were Daxon and Carl really inside the house with me earlier and I just didn't notice them? You okay, Chase? Nervous about talking to Flynn? Just pretend he's in his underwear. Then intimidate him with your erection until he's no longer mad at us for talk for stalking him. The ram nods sagely, giving me a bit of a serene look. I stare back at him. That's how the gays work. I read it in a blog site. He holds up his phone. The one with all the gays. I feel myself smirking a little. I'm fine, guys. Just had a weird nap earlier. Still getting my brain unfuzzed. Cool, but, uh... Carl looks back toward the building. I'm still gonna chill here in the car. He clears his throat, sitting more upright. Tactical support. Daxton covers his face with his dark hands. Cadet Hunter and Lieutenant, uh, Daxton, prepare to beam out. Um, thanks, Captain Carl. Uh, make sure to, uh, scan for life signs and report any anomalies. Oh, God. Daxon inter-exits the car in embarrassment. Oh no, man! Lieutenant Daxon beamed out too early! His particles are destabilizing! <laughs> I need... I, <laughs> Jesus, I hear enough of this stuff moderating the roleplay subform. I don't need to hear it IRL! He walks up to one of the front windows, seemingly, seeming, seemingly trying to peer inside through one of the gaps in the construction paper. I open the door, about to head out, head out when I feel Carl's paw on my shoulder. Hey, man! I blink some, looking back at him. The parking lot light overhead gives his fur a sort of an orangey appearance, and his eyes look blue. Hmm? You've been, like, really quiet tonight. I know I haven't been around you in two years, but you're still acting, I don't know, weird from what I remember. Carl. Just don't worry, okay? He looks to the building. You know how he gets, but overall, Flynn's cool. He leans back in his seat, pulling up his phone. The illuminating blue glow of the screen replaces the faint orange of the street light. Just don't tell him I said that. I exhale, smiling despite myself. All right, Carl. I turn around, pausing. I know you have your interview, but we should talk. We should uh, talk and catch up. We should talk later. Catch up properly. There you go. Okay. You know it, man. And I'm glad you're getting well, with, getting on well with Daxton. Truly, I see him grinning in the rearview mirror. <laughs> it's weird. He's like someone I'd meet online, but like in real life, you know. I'm not sure I follow. Yeah, don't worry about it. Don't get murdered in there. I snirk dryly. I'll try not to. I step out and nearly close the door on my tail. I must have been more distracted than I thought. Seeing Daxon against the side of the building, I can't help but think he looks downright eerie. He doesn't have scales like Flynn, so he's just this rubbery black color that blends into the shadows. As species as that sounds. When he turns towards me, his eyes stick out like headlights in the night. Uh, hey, Chase. Check this out. He beckons me over toward a small metal sheet by the door. I step closer. Some words are engraved in the front. So you've heard of us. A winking smiley face is pictured below the text. What the hell? I know, right? He moves towards the door, his thick tail flicking in an anticipatory sway behind him. I'm surprised he can control that thing. Watch it be locked. Might as well try. After you, Lieutenant. Don't start. He grasps the handle and the door opens with ease. Oh boy. Daxton looks over me once looks over to me once more and we step inside. The smell of decades worth of cigarette smoke and dust hits my nose instantly. Daxton coughs, trying to muffle himself as we see the shadows of various patrons throughout the dimly lit bar. Everything near the counter is illuminated up with a sort of green tinge, while the rest of the establishment has red lighting. Well, in the places it does have lighting, I've never been inside a restaurant or bar this dark before. The walls are mainly decorated with faded 1950s beer adverts and a mounted CRT monitor near the entrance looks to be streaming an old cricket match. I don't see any bartenders or waiters. Nobody's behind the bar. Huh. Daxon half speaks, half whispers. Maybe we should take a seat so it doesn't look like we're gawking? Yeah, good idea. We move toward the closest table to the entrance. The location leaves us completely enshrouded in darkness. There's a lamp above us, but it looks broken. 
copper wiring hanging out where the bulb is supposed to go. All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.